Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the importance of ethics in the accounting profession. Now we need to have public confidence for certain professions. Why? Because certain profession affect not only their direct client, affect the public at large. And in these professions, the professionals, the people that run those professions, they always need to be ethical. And what's ethics? Always do the right thing. So what is the term professional? When we say someone is professional, well, it implies a responsibility that goes beyond their personal duties and legal requirement of the society. Simply put, going above and beyond your responsibilities. What are some examples of professionals? Well, physicians, medical doctors, attorneys, lawyers, politicians, religious people, pilots, auditors, accountant. Let's take a look at a, phys a physician or a medical doctor. When you undertake a medical operation, you literally put your life in the hands of that professional. Not only your financial status, your life. You are going to rely on their professional judgment, professional skills. So they have to be ethical. So professionals have the responsibility to their client. They also have a professional responsibility to their fellow practitioners. Because if you make a mistake as a doctor, you are going to badly influence the reputation of other doctors, at least the doctors in the same hospital. And sometimes you may affect the public at large. And that's why when professionals, physicians, attorneys, politicians, religious people, auditors, accountants make a mistake and they, they lose public confidence, the public is outraged. Why? Because they don't only affect themselves personally. It's not good for you personally. It's also not good for your profession. And your profession needs public confidence. A case in point for auditing is Arthur Anderson is a prime example that tarnished, that tarnished the profession of accounting and auditing. And after and Arthur Anderson committed those frauds with Enron and WordCom, what happened is the government intervened and they created the PCAOB, the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, to oversee auditors. Prior to Arthur Anderson debacles, the auditing profession was self self-regulated. In other words, we did not need the government to look up over our shoulders. Now, the government will have to look out over our shoulders through PCAOB. Simply put, we lost the confidence of the public. And that's why auditing is a profession where public confidence is important because you are issuing a report, an opinion about the financial statements, and that opinion is not worth anything if the public don't believe in you, don't trust you. Otherwise, you're not adding any value that, to that report. So let's focus on auditors. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. What is special about auditors or CPA firms? Well, they maintain a unique relationship with financial statement users compared to most other professionals. Think about doctors and lawyers. Doctors and lawyers, these are professionals, but when you hire them, you hire them directly. In other words, when you go to visit a doctor or a lawyer, they're providing you the service directly to you. The CPAs are a little bit different. The relationship between CPAs and the users of the financial statements, it's, it's a little bit unique. How so? Let's think about it. We have a company. The company hires the CPA to conduct an audit. Then this audit is intended to the external users. So think about it. There's no relationship between the CPA and the users. The users, the users did not hire the CPA. It's the company that, that hired the CPA. Nevertheless, the users are relying on the CPA judgment. So notice, you have, you have 
you have to have a responsibility for the people who did not even hire you, the external users. You cannot lose the public confidence. You have to act with integrity at all time. And what's in integrity? Doing the right thing when no one is watching over your shoulder. Doing the right thing. So the auditor cannot fudge the numbers thinking, well, the, the users did not hire me to do so. It's the company that does. And I'm providing statements to the user. You can't do that. You have to conduct yourself at the highest level. Because someone, and that someone is the public at large, is relying on your decisions, relying on your outcome, relying on your opinion, relying on your report, whether they should invest or not. That's why auditors, they have to conduct themselves at what level? The highest level, especially the highest level of integrity. The trust in the financial statement, the trust of the public, the confidence in the financial report, hinges on what? On the firm upholding a strong standard of professionalism. Because the public will have to see CPA firms as skilled, they know what they're doing, and most importantly, impartial by financial statement users. They are independent of the client. They are protecting you, the public, who are using the financial statement. Therefore, there's a need to increase public confidence in the profession. How? What do we do? Well, we have the AICPA Code of Professional Conduct, which we will cover this in this course we'll cover this code we would look at the pcaob and SOX requirement for independence we have to follow as accountant as auditors laws and regulation we have to follow code of conduct within the firm which is the quality control system each firm will have some sort of a quality control system all of these together put together they increase the public confidence in a profession that serves the public at large Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. Which of the following is the main reason for establishing a code of conduct? So it's the main reason. A. It's required by law and regulation. Is it required to have a code of, pro of professional conduct within a profession? Not at all. It's required to follow laws and regulation, that's for sure, but it's not required to establish a code of professional conduct for your company or for your industry as that matter. That's not the reason why companies or industries form a code of professional conduct. A is out. Although it sounds good. B. It provides a framework for establishing successful internal control. Well, it's good if you have a code of professional conduct in addition to having proper internal control, but it's not needed. That's not the main reason why we have a code of professional conduct. Well, it's a good internal control to have a code of professional conduct, but that's not the reason to have a successful internal control. Therefore, B is out. C, it increases the confidence of the public and the quality of services provided by the profession. Would the code of professional conduct signal that? I would say yes, if you have a code of professional conduct. You, you have certain rules. You are telling the public we are following those rules. Therefore, you can be assured of our services. Well, a code of professional conduct, a written code would help increase the confidence of the public in you. Well, that's a good that's a good answer choice, but let's look at D. It enabled the customers to evaluate the quality of the performance of professional services. Not at all. You could have a code of professional conduct. All companies will have a code of professional conduct. That's not going to help customers evaluate the, the performance of, prof of, of professional services. It's not going to help that. Well, how do, you, how do customers evaluate the performance of professional services? Well, they look at the work that you did and they judge you based on that, not based on your code of conduct. D is out. Again, as we mentioned, C is a correct choice. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, true, false, additional lectures that's going to help you understand this concept, the code of professional conduct for CPAs. The AICPA Code of Professional Conduct, the PCAOB, and SOX Independence Rule Requirement. Critical, critical terms for your CPA exam and account as an accounting student. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.